Ah uh, yes, revolution. A classic pastime for many across the world. Nothing better than storming the capital, executing the monarch, and establishing a fair government of, for, and by the people. Maybe not for those in power though. As for all political and social developments, revolutions benefit some and hurt others. If you're watching this video, you may be in one of several positions. Perhaps you're a monarch trying your best to keep your realm together with the threat of revolution just around the corner. Perhaps you're a disgruntled member of the middle class and you're frustrated by the lack of social mobility and jealous of the arbitrary birthright privileges enjoyed by the aristocracy. Perhaps you're a member of the peasantry and you're just sick of feudal dues and serfdom. No matter who you are, you and your socioeconomic class have a reason either for wanting a revolution to sprout or for the status quo of the ancient regime to be upheld. That is why I have created this instructional and analytical video in which we will answer a simple yet crucial question. Why does a revolution occur? A primary and obvious contributing factor to revolutions is the lack of government revenue or economic stimulation. Similar to Jane Austen's postulate considering young bachelors, it is a truth universally acknowledged that the purpose of government is to govern. Another truth, possibly less than universally acknowledged, is that in order to govern, a government generally needs money. If a country's government and economy are strong and stable, there will be no cause for violence, no incentive for revolution. Therefore, it's advisable not to plunge the nation into debt and financial disarray. Because discontent usually begins with people starving and economic downturn, the detrimental effect of not having any government money is only amplified during these times of famine, as the government has no way to respond when the people are starving. Then people get the impression that either the government doesn't care about their problems, or that the government is just really bad at dealing with their problems, which leads to people wanting a new, more competent government, which then leads to just an unstoppable downward spiral into chaos. As demonstrated by multiple revolutions through history, the most surefire way to put the country into a downward spiral into financial ruin is through costly warring. Many revolutions are preceded by wars that drained government funds, but they had little gains to justify the costs. Such examples included the Seven Years' War, which preceded the American Revolution, the American Revolution, which preceded the French Revolution, and World War I, which preceded the Russian Revolution. This can even apply to the English Civil War, which initially began as a dispute between Charles I and Parliament over taxing, ultimately ending in Charles's execution and establishment of a radical Puritan Republic. There's nothing better than the good old class struggle. One of the worst things for a moderately wealthy member of the middle class is to know that the only thing separating them and a member of a minor aristocratic family is the privilege acquired upon birth or lack thereof. Seething rage is all that the bourgeoisie feel when they see that being born into the right family is more important to run the country than attending university and actually being qualified to run the country. There are even cases in which hard-working doctors and lawyers are more wealthy than some of the nobility wasting away at Versailles. While the poor are working their hardest to support themselves and their families, they hear of the nobles and royal family living expensive and extravagant lives, funded by taxpayer money, with little benefit for society as a whole other than to be a huge money sink. When a majority of the people have great disdain for the aristocracy, and the government is run mainly by aristocrats, that generally isn't the best sign for the government. Another way to ensure a revolution is to make sure that people feel like they have no voice in government. Whether it be only 33% of the estates general representing 85% of the French population, or the colonists in America getting no representation at all in Parliament, people generally don't like having laws imposed against them without at least a say in the lawmaking process. This gives the people the impression of oppression, 
even if the government isn't actually tyrannical. An example of this is when American colonists were discontented by the lack of representation in Parliament while being taxed against their will, despite the fact that they were still paying lower taxes than British people living in London. A reasonable way to prevent people from violently usurping the government's seat of power is for the government to simply make compromises with the will of the public. Tying in with reason number one, a bankrupt government lacks the means to deal with the needs of its citizens. Nothing delegitimizes a government more than when people feel like the government does not or even refuses to hear their cries for help. If a government cannot appease the masses enough to prevent a revolution in the first place, it'll only find itself in a progressively precarious position as time goes forward. As a revolution gains momentum, its members will begin to make demands that are increasingly ridiculous and radical, and the government will certainly be unwilling to concede. This mistake is unavoidable in some cases, especially with overseas colonies as the government can't easily respond to these revolutions, but this problem can be clearly seen in Louis XVI's indecisiveness and hesitancy leading up to the French Revolution, with citizens mistaking his hesitancy for apathy. If being unresponsive to public opinion spells eventual doom for a government, outright opposition to the revolution is only a catalyst that will speed up the government's downfall. Making attempts at stopping a revolution will do nothing but give the revolutionaries more legitimacy and add to public support of the revolution. To those seeking to avoid revolution, firing any shots is inadvisable, whether the shots be fired in Boston Harbor or from the Bastille. Even if the government is willing to make concessions, such concessions are in vain if the government secretly doesn't agree with them. Even though Louis XVI allowed for revolutionaries to replace the monarchy with a constitutional monarchy, his scheming with Austria and discovery during the flight to Varenne made apparent his opposition to the revolution, ultimately leading to the complete and utter destruction of the French monarchy. In the new age of the Enlightenment, public opinion is essentially everything, as monarchs can no longer claim the divine right to rule. A monarch only has the permission to be a monarch if the people view him as a legitimate monarch. Making correct decisions won't help if it's a PR failure. A perfect example of this is Louis XVI firing his terrible financial advisor, Jacques Necker, without giving a good reason why. Yes, Necker did give some terrible advice by saying that pretending there isn't a recession at all will actually fix the economy, but Louis didn't explain this at all, so everyone actually disliked Louis for firing him. Ultimately. A government falls to revolutionaries as a result of two reasons. Number one, having no money. Because the government can't fulfill its primary purpose without money, which would result in people calling for its replacement. Number two, being unpopular with the people, because a government that lacks the support of the people has no right to govern. If you apply these tips to your situation, you are guaranteed success. If you're a king, you will have to make concessions, but you'll still avoid the destruction of centuries of tradition and history as well as your own death. If you're a revolutionary, you will finally see the teardown of feudal institutions and noble privileges. Today is the day you stand up for yourself and your class. Today is the day you assert what you're truly worth. Today is the day you liberate yourself from the chains of tyranny. Today is the day that you create a new world order in which men and women stand side by side, hand in hand, as the old and rusty ancient regime comes crumbling down. But what do I know? I'm just a high schooler.